Welcome to the Raw Food Health Empowerment Show. I'm your host, Samantha Salmon, Certified Holistic Health Coach and author of You Can Afford to Be Healthy. And today, I wanted to talk about this very interesting conversation that happened on Twitter, on Akin Olakun's Twitter feed. Um, there's a link below to the feed, very interesting conversation. Um, but he mentions here, from my experience, the three most vehemently defended things, states, behaviors on Twitter are smoking marijuana, depression, anxiety, mental illness, and victimhood. So I just wanted to share my thoughts really quick on this because um, there definitely is an empowering message to this that I wanted to share. Um, so I completely agree with this. And I think that all three of these things are defended because um, people, the masses, the majority of people <laughs> do not fully understand how the body works. So like, let's tackle the first bullet point, smoking marijuana. I really have a problem with smoking. It doesn't matter if it's broccoli, basically because our lungs just don't work like that. If you walk into smoke, your lungs is, is reacting to it in a negative way. Our bodies are not chimneys. We are not meant to inhale smoke. Um, and so smoking anything just biologically does not make sense. Does that make marijuana bad, the hemp plant bad? No, it does not. Actually, um, my mother, which if you, if you know me personally, then you know I posted on Facebook a few years ago about her healing journey as a child. When she was a young child, probably like around nine or 12 or something like that, she was really, really sick, like very thin, frail, thin hair, um, losing hair, and she was super sick. And I guess their, the doctors couldn't help or whatever, but what her dad ended up doing was um, he uh, cut her hair and he put her in a bath with a whole bunch of bushes from the surrounding area. They were herbs, okay? One of them being the hemp plant. And the church came and they all prayed over her in this bath. And from that, miraculous healing occurred. You know, I know it sounds strange to a lot of people, but to kind of explain a few elements that are happening here that have been documented in a series of books um, that I can share with you. If you're interested in that, you can comment below on what books to read up on. Uh, if I don't mention it here, because I love books. I love to recommend books. First of all, any all the books by Dr. D Joe Dispenza, um, Lisa Rankin, Dr. Lisa Rankin. Uh, Andrew Weil has a book about the mind. Uh, Dr. Andrew Weil. Um, so those are probably the top three people. Uh, Dr. Christian Northrup has even talked about this. But basically, your your mind intention can create healing in the body. And why I mentioned that in this story is because she's in the bath. She's scared. She feels like she's, you know, sickly. She's sick. Obviously, she knows she's sick. She's been going through this process. Um, she feels like she's probably not going to make it. But the community, the church is there. They have a strong belief in God and they're praying over her. And that that intention, that spirituality and intention of and that belief is what made her well. Um, and her belief in that as well. Um, so that's one thing. And then the second thing is that our skin is the largest organ. We actually absorb elements from the outside through our skin. So all of the cosmetics and oils and lotions and things you put on your body, they're actually being absorbed inside the skin, inside the body, through the skin. So she's in that bath. And all the healing medicinal properties of all of these herbs, including the hemp plant, is going into her body. I will never deny the healing of hemp. Obviously, that's been 
uh, documented, researched, all of that. Um, even my grandmother had uh, used to drink it like tea. Those uses, bathing, drinking it as a tea, that I think makes total sense. This is how we consume herbs normally. If you're consuming it in a pill form or even in a spray form, I know they have it in a lot of different forms that are out there, drops and things like that. That's fine, but to smoke anything just does not seem to be a wise choice for the health of your lungs, okay? So I think that when people think about or talk about smoking marijuana, they're just interested in the 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 degradation of the herb. I, I find that some people abuse herbs. One of them being, and I'll probably include a link below, is with charcoal, okay? Charcoal um, is very helpful if you're having digestive issues, you consume something that, you know, makes your stomach cramp up and hurt some kind of food poisoning or whatever, or gas or bloating or whatever, you take it the one time. If you have gas or bloating that's chronic, it's consistent, you're not going to take activated charcoal on a regular basis for that. You need to go to the root of the problem and solve the problem, okay? Not be dependent on charcoal all the time. That's not healthy. And mixing charcoal with actual different foods like ice cream and smoothies and different drinks to make it black. I mean, this is what really annoys me about these different like health trends and stuff like that. They take an actual helpful, healthy herb and bastardize it and completely just, you know, not respect it. Herbs need to be respected, you know? Um, so yeah, um, it's the same thing with marijuana. Anyway, moving on. Depression, anxiety, and mental illness. This is another thing. I think it's great that people are speaking up and speaking out on their feelings and emotions. I think that we've made a lot of progress and that progress should not be hindered. At the same time, I wish more people were aware. I wish the media talked about it more on the effects that our diet, that the standard American diet is having on the gut, the gut known as the second brain, the gut where all our, um, you know, our um, nervous system is connected and it's affecting our mood. And this is scientifically documented. There's a link below in the description. I talked about this on a previous episode. I went in detail on a blog on it on the book Wheat Belly, I think it was by Dr. William Davis, um, but not only him, Dr. Christian Northrup talks about it as well. Uh, all the functional medicine doctors are talking about it. Everyone that studies Alzheimer's, um, or if you read any book on FODMAP, which is basically uh, like low FODMAP diet is for people who have IBS issues or they have um, possibly even Crohn's or, you know, some severe um, gut issues, they're encouraged to follow a low FODMAP diet. Um, but even those people, nutritionists, dietitians, they are aware that food affects your emotional state, your mental state. It can cause suicidal thoughts. It can cause depression. It can cause anxiety. This stuff has been documented. There are researchers in Poland who have found this all over the world. Like if you read any nutrition books, you know this. Yet it's not, I guess, not glamorous enough for it to be seen on on whatever media that people are watching. Um, so it's not that well known. So, you know, on the one hand, it's good to express yourself. On the other hand, you need to be actively doing something about it. You don't sit in depression and just, you know, stay there. Be aware of how to lift yourself out of it. If you're so far deep, you can't. That's where the community needs to come into play because you have people around you. Everyone has someone around that knows what you're eating, what you're doing, what you're watching, you know, that can help to... Um, give you that piece of string to pull you up. And so I, I want to encourage you all, if you see people eating foods that are triggers, if someone is having mood imbalances, that doesn't seem quite right. Um, 
you know, I'm sure there's a lot of different things. There's a, there's situations that push people to emotionally eat, which can also be triggering these stressful thoughts and these, these negative thoughts and these dark thoughts. Um, and the foods that they're then pushed to eat could be exacerbating the issue. Um, but mindfulness is the key because if you're aware, then you know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Well, maybe if I switch this a little bit and I had an interview actually with a friend named Audrey who, um, went raw and healed her depression and anxiety. And I'll, I'll post a link to that below so you can read that. I'm not telling you, you need to go raw, but you definitely need to cut out certain foods and all those resources will be below. Um, the third thing, the victimhood, which I basically already touched on, is that, yes, life is hard. God never promised an easy life. No one's going to get that. No one. The richest person you see in the world does not have it easy. The poorest person you see in the world does not have it easy. And everyone in between doesn't have it easy. Everyone has challenges. Everyone has struggles. Even if they're on Instagram and have millions of followers, they have struggles and challenges. That is a promise for all of us. Um, so even so, that doesn't mean you give up, you throw your hands up, and you just let life be. Um, there's a time and a place for um, acceptance of what is instead of being resistant to it and then causing stress in your life. But at the same time, you need to fight for yourself, uh, stand up for yourself, and reach for your goals. I completely, 100%, believe that what is the point of living unless you're going to live it full out, right? You've got to live it full out. What else are you doing? What's the point? So if you're having struggles and challenges and you have goals in your life and you feel like there are mountains in front of you, get the tools you need and start climbing that mountain. I mean, start at the bottom and take one step forward and just keep in keep putting another step in front of it. Don't think about the whole mountain. Just start taking some steps and keep moving forward, okay? Because what else are you going to do? You either move forward or you waste your life. And those are the two options. Anyway, I just wanted to express that. I thought the tweet was great, but I wanted to put some context on it and around it because um, I can Twitter feed is very interesting, but I find that there's a lot more that could be expressed. Twitter doesn't allow more than 140 characters. And um, this, was a, this was a really important tweet that I felt like people really needed to hear more about, about this. You know, yes, it's defended, but this is where society needs to kind of switch their focus a little bit or look at things a little differently, okay? forget smoking anything, learn how to heal your depression, anxiety, and mental illness in a holistic manner, and don't be a victim because you don't have to be. It's a choice. All right? Have a blessed week. <music>